Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're going to do something that might be illegal. It might be illegal for you, it might be illegal, well it is illegal for me, but it's not illegal for everybody. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this Yezu FT5D, I mean you already know this, you saw the title, you saw the thumbnail, you clicked the video, we're going to Mars mod it. Let's get over to the workbench and talk all about it and make it happen. This is my go bag for my FT5D. I'm really going to need to work on that. I'm going to need a battery. That's a big battery. There's a video coming out on that soon too, if it's not already out. I'm going to need a radio. There we go, the FT5D. And I'm going to need a dummy load for this because I don't have the Mars license. But if you have the Mars license, then you can go ahead and use this radio. Step one, this radio beacons out on APRS. So I want to make sure that I don't ruin anything. So I'm going to stick this dummy load on there. Then we'll put the big old battery on there. And then we'll turn it on. I need to charge this battery. All right, 144.390 on VFOB and two meter call on VFOA. And she's transmitting just fine while she's looking for GPS satellites and for Bluetooth stuffs. Let's get this thing into channel mode. And that's going to be a long time turning. And now let's put in a frequency way outside of the handband. The 70 centimeter handband ends at 450. Let's do 460. And can I key up there? It's green because it's receiving. TX inhibit. Look at that. TX inhibit. That don't work. Now let's get it fixed. Off. We're going to get the dummy load off and out of the way. Get this chunky battery out of the way. If you guys can think of a good way to test how long this battery would last on a two meter HT, I'm looking for some information on that. Underneath the battery on the back of the radio, there is this little rubber grommet. And if you open it up, there's that little teeny tiny resistor in there. Step one, this is really, really tiny. We're gonna need to increase our vision Good thing nobody's going to see me looking like this. I'm going to use my micro go kit. I've got a video on these little plastic boxes and all the cool things that I was able to put in them, all the little ham gadgets and so forth. And in here is my pine sill. And I love this thing. It is a USB-C or barrel jack powered soldering iron and it's pines version of the T100. So I'm going to use that. And now we need to do that zoom in. It should be as easy as heating up the solder on both sides of the device, both sides of that little teeny tiny resistor, and just pushing it out of the way. And I want to be really careful not to add too much pressure, because if I do, I will fling that chip inside the radio, and that is not a good idea. Okay, so I've got a little fresh solder on the soldering iron, which might be able to help me bridge between the two contacts at the same time. Okay, now I need some flux. Thought it would be easy without flux, but it is not easy without flux. So we'll put a little bit of flux in there. And that thing is just on there tight. All right, I'm not gonna lie, that was a huge pain in the butt to do. And I got it out. There it is on my finger. So I'm gonna see if I can clean this up a little bit because I made a huge mess in there. I'm gonna use some solder wick. Most of that in there is flux, which is why I don't like using flux. But I think it's the type of flux that I have. And now with some flux remover in there, I got rid of all that brown stuff. Let's see if there's any leftover solder in there. Sometimes with solder, it's a good idea to put in some fresh new solder to go rejuvenate the old solder. A little isopropyl alcohol when you're all done. And there you go. Macro lens zoom on that thing. Okay, 
Put the little rubber cap back in. This is going to remove all of your stored memories, but you just gotta start over and put them back in. You got a backup, right? Let's get the dummy load back on. All right, the moment of truth. Ah, oh, that was worrisome. Call sign, please enter your call sign. So it did a full factory reset, which is how it lost its, its everythings. It's a touch screen, I always forget that. K, M, numbers, nine, letters, G, PTT, and we're good to go. All right, so before our frequency was locked, long press, there it is, and we couldn't transmit out of band. So let's go up to 460 again. And dummy load, because I am not able to do that. Look at that. Transmitting. Lights on. Power's up. We are good to go. Still can't go below 130, 139. Let's see how far up we can go. Yeah, so 140. One forty nine. One fifty. One sixty. One seventy. One eighty. Let's do one seventy one. Getting close. 174. So it's 140 to 174. And let's do 400. Four ten. Four twenty. There we go. Can we do four fifteen? Nope. Okay, so four twenty. All right, let's go to 490. Something noisy around there. 470. All right, so 420 to 470. Awesome. I would say that's a lot of fun, but it was more difficult than I thought it would be. Quick note about Mars Mod. If you are authorized to do Mars work, then do Mars work. It's an awesome thing. It's the military adjunct radio service or military adjacent radio service or military auxiliary radio service. I forget what the A stands for. This was not for the faint of heart. I have seen other people do this with their FT3, but not with an FT5. And it looked like it was pretty easy, so I figured I'd get after it. I don't know what was going on, but even after mine was done, it was still hard to clean the solder off of the pads on the radio. Maybe I have a particularly old version of the FT5 that was assembled on a Friday with bad solder. I have no idea. It is really hard to get fresh solder in to help reactivate and reflow the old solder. So I had to struggle with it a little bit, added a bit of extra heat, and ran it out. Normally I run at 640, I turned it up. I'm not gonna tell you how high I turned it up because I don't recommend you turn it up unless you're really good at soldering. And I have done quite a bit of soldering, so I thought I was good enough to do this. I did get it done, it does clean up nice. The flux didn't help any. The flux remover did help remove the crusty flux. Maybe I've got bad flux. If you have a good suggestion for what flux to use, leave it in the comments down below because I am using MG Chemicals Flux, I forget what it is. And then I also had the MG Chemicals 4140, 4104A Flux Remover and that helped to remove all of the flux and then IPA to clean up after all of that and get it back. As always, I have links for anything exciting that I showed in the video, tools and whatnot, in the description down below. Check them out. Turn the radio on and she's a working good. I consider it a success. Speaking of successes, I am on a mission this year to get 100,000 subscribers. You can help. 
there is a subscribe button right below the video that you are watching and subscribing is free and every little bit helps. In the meantime, there's a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.